Hello, welcome back to Decaf Math. Um, so let's continue with implicit differentiation and let's work out another slightly more complicated example. So if you want to hear a direct like explanation for what to do and when to use um, implicit differentiation, feel free to check out part one. Um, and this is just like a continuation or like part two of that video. So for this video, I'm going to assume that we already know the basic steps, but let's work out this example because it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. If you just take your time step by step and you're clear with your derivative rules, you'll get the right answer. So as usual, I'll just sit back. So, we have x cubed plus 5xy minus y to the fourth equals 8. And our goal is to find dy dx. So we're just going to look for a general expression. We're not going to find the derivative at a particular point, although we could if we wanted to. So, this equation gives us some kind of relationship between x and y. It's not a direct relationship, but, you know, we can see that they are related in some way because they need to satisfy this. So, let's try implicit differentiation. So, let's take the derivative with respect to x on both sides. So, just piece by piece. The derivative with, of this thing with respect to x, of course, that means we can take the derivative of this plus the derivative of this minus the derivative of this, right? So let's just do that one by one. The derivative of x cubed with respect to x is 3x squared 3x squared 3x squared, right? There's only an x term and we're taking the derivative with respect to x so that's it, just 3x squared this part gets a little bit tricky. We're going to take the derivative of 5xy, but if we have a product, we have to use the product rule, right, for derivatives. So, we can actually pull out this 5 and just take the derivative of xy because with derivatives, we can pull out scalars, right, a multiple, scalar multiple. So we're really just taking the derivative of xy prime. Or not the derivative, we're just taking the derivative of xy, x times y, right? And so, with the product rule, if you need to review that, go ahead. Um, it sounds like a mouthful, but this is how I remember it. You take the derivative of the first thing, and then keep the second, so you multiply by the second, plus keeping the first thing, multiplied by the derivative of the second. So, I'm going to take the derivative of x, which is 1, times, and then you keep the second term, so just y, then plus keeping the first term, times the derivative of y. Remember, when we're doing implicit differentiation, we just take our normal derivative, so the derivative of y is still 1, so that's the derivative of y uh, with respect to y, but because we're taking the derivative with respect to x, we also tack on a dy dx. And that's it for this part. So, I wanted to use this problem because we're actually applying the product rule, but that's kind of confusing because when I learned implicit differentiation, it was like, when am I really using dy dx? I know I'm supposed to include them, but do I include it on the outside of the parentheses or when am I actually doing it? But remember, just because the problem got a little bit more complicated because we have to use the product rule, our original implicit differentiation rule is the same. It's just that when I take this 
um, product rule here when I did take the derivative of a term that contains y so in this case the second part of that product rule I had 1 times and then I needed to tack on the dy dx with that part and that tacking on I remember is just because of the chain rule the chain 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 rule right basically um, and so this part doesn't need a dy dx because we're just taking the derivative of x and then we happen to keep y, right? So we're not just throwing in a dy dx whenever we have a y, it's only when we're taking the derivative of a term that contains y. So only when we're taking the derivative, because that's the chain rule part, right? We're continuing, the derivative of minus y to the fourth is minus 4y cubed, right? But because this is the derivative of a term with y, we also need to tack on our dy dx, right? And then equals the derivative of 8 with respect to x is just the derivative of a constant is 0. Okay, so we have this. So the hardest part, in my opinion, is to remember that when we're using this product rule here to not put in the dy dx here or dy dx on the outside it's only with this piece so really the steps are exactly the same as our part one it's just you have to be careful with how we're taking that derivative so from here I'm just gonna go ahead and um, erase this one times y Number one is our multiplicative identity, multiplicative identity. So one times anything is itself, so that I can just go away. I just put the one for clarity um, sake when we're working through this because x prime is one, right? I wanted to show you that we weren't just doing this in our head. But now that we're going to try to solve for dy dx, this is the same as before, we can do this algebraically. But since I'm going to try and get this dy dx on this side, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and distribute this 5 back out since I'm going to be separating these terms. So I have 3x squared plus 5y plus 5x dy dx minus 4y. expanded this out and now remember we're going to try and keep all the dy dx terms on this side of the equal sign so there's that equal sign and move everything else that way so this and this will go over here and then for these I will remember I'm trying to solve for dy dx so I'm just going to go ahead and factor out these coefficients so I have To move this over here, I do a minus 3x squared minus 5y. So now we just go ahead and divide this to bring that over here, and that's our answer. dy dx equals negative 3x squared minus 5y over 5x minus 4y our answer. That's it. And if you want this to look a little bit nicer, you can, you know, go ahead and pull the negative from the side and um, and just pull that out of the numerator. You know, whatever you want. And if you're extra fancy, you can put that negative in the denominator so that you only have a positive. But that's neither here nor our actual answer. And so now again, notice that we got dy dx, but it's an expression with x and y, so we can plug in specific x and y coordinates if we want to, but 
this again gives us a way to find dy dx even though we don't have an explicit function for y in terms of x. Anyways, I hope between part 1 and part 2 this can help clarify any issues that you had with implicit differentiation. And I will see you around soon. Till next time.